Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau, and in this video I would like to show you how you can run psychology experiments online, so in a browser, uh, using Open Sesame and Yatos. Now for this, uh, for this video I'm going to assume that you have some basic knowledge of Open Sesame, so if you're unfamiliar with the software, um, then I would suggest first looking at the basic tutorial, which you can also find uh, on YouTube or online, um, and then coming back to this particular video. Because here I'm really going to focus on the online functionality uh, per se and not on how the basic functionality of Open Sesame. So without further ado, let's uh, take a look at what we need. So here you see on the left hand side, you see Open Sesame, right? What as it looks like when you start the software. And on the right hand side, you see the documentation of YATOS. And YATOS and Open Sesame, that's what we're going to use. Now, so um, if you start Open Sesame, um, then it by default has a very simple uh, uh, welcome message, kind of like a dummy experiment that contains only a welcome message. If I run this using the standard uh, run button, you get Open Sesame 3.2 Kafka as Kafka. That's it, right? So we run the experiment. This is the normal way to run your experiment uh, on the desktop, right? As a desktop application. That's what you're probably used to. Now, so how can we run this a uh, very simple uh, dummy experiment with containing only this welcome message. How can we run that in the browser? Well, we can do that if you have the latest version at the time of recording, the latest version of Open Sesame, which is at least Open Sesame 3.2.6. So here you see that's what I'm using, Open Sesame 3.2.6. If you have this version, then under tools, you will see OS Web, um, and you can click on that. Now, if you click on open OS web, then it will open an extension, the OS web extension. And it has a few options that are important and that allow you to run your experiment in a browser. So uh, the first thing actually is the test experiment in external browser. So let's do that first, just to see what happens then. So if I click on this, Open Sesame will start the experiment um, in your default browser, which for me is Google Chrome. So it opens here on the right hand side. Uh, I click on it and I see that same standard welcome message that is our dummy experiment, right? So up, press key, the screen turns white, the experiment is over. So this very simple, useless dummy experiment uh, runs in a browser. Um, important to note that if you click test experiment in external browser, you will open the experiment in a browser, but it is not online. Everything will still happen on your own computer. It will create a temporary file on your own computer and open that temporary file in the browser, right? So you will not get a link, for example, that you can distribute to your participants. In order to do that, we need to export the experiment as a YATOS study, which I will show you later. Now, so what are the other options? There is the possible subject numbers. That's a comma separated list of subject numbers. And every time that you start the experiment, one of these subject numbers will be chosen at random. Um, that allows you, for example, to implement counterbalancing, where, for, say, all the odd-numbered participants uh, respond in one particular way, and all the even-numbered even participants respond in a slightly different way. Then there is the option to make your browser full screen. This can be a bit finicky in different browsers, because browsers don't like it, really, when you go full screen, because they want to protect the, the user, of course, from malicious uh, websites taking over the entire screen, right? Um, then there's a compatibility check. This compatibility check is uh, quite important um, because it will tell you whether all the things, all the components of your experiment are actually compatible with, uh, with OS Web. Right now it says no problems detected. But for example, if we, um, meaning that this experiment runs fine and we saw that it did, right? But some things are actually not allowed. Um, or not supported, I should say. And the most important thing that is not supported is Python inline code. So here we have the Python inline script. If I drag this into the experiment, I will, here's where I would type arbitrary Python code, right? Programming. And I go back to OS Web, Tools OS Web. You will see that it says item inline script is not supported. And the same is true for um, all kinds of different uh, functionality, for example, eye tracking or... Uh, other coroutines, co more complicated pieces of software. So it's important to check whether your, whether your experiment will actually run online. And then finally, there's the version of OS Web, 1.2.5.1. Okay, um, so let's take a look. Now we know the basics. Now, so let's take a look at a slightly more uh, realistic example. So I click on new, and here there's a recent experiment that I was working with, reward capture. Click and open it. No. Uh, what is this experiment? This is a proper experiment. 
and it is quite complicated, but it still runs online. And we've actually collected some data with this experiment. So let's first run it simply as a normal desktop application, a quick run. Okay, then what you see is uh, instructions, find the vertical target. So the goal in this experiment is to find the, the, the shape that is, has a vertical line running through it, right, the target, and then indicate by pressing the right button if the, the field side is on the right, or the left button if the field side is on the left. So this is a visual search task, and it is quite complicated in the sense that it has a dynamically generated visual search display, right, there are all kinds of random elements. Um, and that is, that is moderately complicated, I would say, but it's supported by OS Web. So here, so the instructions, I have to press the right button, have to press the left button, get ready, Okay, hop. and you see that you also get feedback, right? So for example, if I do it correctly, I randomly get either uh, 10 or one points to, to vary the reward. And, um, and if I make a mistake, I get a frowny face saying that, uh, that I made a mistake. And also at the end of the block, I will do one block of trials. You will see that I get the average response times, in this case, almost a second, and my accuracy 75%. So all of that stuff is supported by OS Web. Okay, let's quit it. Now, then I said tools, OS web. Let's see if this runs in a browser, test experiment in external browser. And you see, I open it and you see we it's exactly the same thing, um, except that it's running in a browser now. And again, I point out that we're running it in the browser, but you still see that we're doing it uh, locally on my computer, right? So there's a temporary file on my computer that's being opened here. This is not properly online. We're not on the internet here. Um, Okay, oh, press any key, right, left. Oh, <laughs> oh, accidentally opened Zotero. Oh, um, up, yes. Okay, so you see it works, right? Press escape, cancel. Okay, so now we have an experiment. It's a proper experiment. It works. We've checked that it actually runs in a browser. Um, how can we now deploy it? How can we give this experiment to participants? Well, for that, we need YATLs. So here on the right-hand side, we have the YATLs documentation. So what is YATLs? YATLs is a web server that manages online experiments. So you should think of OS Web and Open Sesame as the software that actually runs an individual experiment, but it does not keep track of uh, it's, for example, not a database of different experiments. It does not keep track of different participants. It does not store data, etc. It simply runs the experiment. And YATOS does all the other stuff. It does all the management stuff. It allows you to manage your experiments. Uh, it allows you to collect the data, have different participants, generate links to your experiment, etc. That's what YATOS does. It's a very cool, well-designed piece of software uh, created by uh, Elisa Filovich and Christian Lange from the Meta Motor Lab in Berlin. Very good. So the downside, you might say, of YATOS is that you need to have a YATOS server that you have access to. So um, for example, the University of Groningen has a YATL server and you can, if you work there, you can get a password and username to access their YATL server. On the COXI, I have a YATL server for myself. Different institutions have their own YATL server in more or less the same way that, for example, different institutions have uh, a subscription to Qualtrics, right? And they give their employees a... Uh, access to Qualtrics. So different, like, YATLs is free though, so it is not paid, but nevertheless, you need to have access to a YATL server. Um, what I'm going to do here for this demonstration is use the YATLs tryout server that is provided by the developers of YATLs, but you should not, not use it for actual running of experiments because it is freely accessible to anyone. Everyone can see what you're doing. And also at night, here it says at eight, uh, at night, eight UTC, uh, all the data will be removed, right? So it is only for testing purposes. Um, so if you want to run experiments online, you need to either install your own YATL server or ask your institution to, to, to provide you with the YATL server and give you access to that. But for now, I'm going to use the YATL's tryout server, which is called Cortex. So I click on Cortex here. Up. Uh, all right. So normally I'm already logged in now, but normally you will get a, uh, a log out here. Normally you, you said, okay, log in. You will get a username, test at yatos.org, some password, which I believe is test ABC for the test server or something like that. And then I say, click login. Up. Okay. And then if I log in, you see that the, 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 the Cortex server, the test server, has already been populated with a lot of experiments for you to play with. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Rather, what I'm going to do is import 
our Open Sesame experiment into YATOS. So here I switch to Open Sesame and then I say export experiment as YATOS study. If I do that, it will ask me to save the experiment, reward capture.osx.zip. That will create an archive that contains the experiment and also all the Open Sesame code, all the OS Web JavaScript code that is required to run this experiment. Save. Up. And it, importantly, it will do so in a format that YATOS understands. So then I switch back, switch back to YATOS and I say import study. Then in my downloads, I have reward capture. I select that. YATOS will upload it and it will ask me, do you want to proceed? Do you really want to upload it? Yes, import. And then it says newly imported study reward capture and it will be under the R. Here it is reward capture. Now, if I click on it, I'll make it full screen so that you see it a little bit better and zoom in a little bit so that you can see it better. Up. Okay. Um, so now we have imported our reward capture experiment from Open Sesame into YATOS, and we're very close to being able to deploy our experiment. To, so to give, uh, provide links to our participants that the participants can click on. Um, so how do you do that? How does that work? Well, YATOS has the concept of workers. And what is a worker? Well, a worker is essentially a way to give links with particular restrictions. So I click on uh, worker and batch manager. There is the default um, batch, open it. Then you see um, different, you will, all of this is documented very well on the YATOS documentation, right? So I'll go a bit quickly. But basically what you will see here are different ways in which you can give the experiment to uh, participants. The YATOS worker is just for you as a, as a, as a researcher to test the experiment. Personal single worker is a person, an individual link that you can give to a participant if you want that participant to execute the experiment only once. A personal multiple worker, if I, my understanding is correctly, is the same thing, but then you get multiple links to distribute uh, to multiple participants. A general single worker uh, has some other restrictions, which I'm not sure what they are. Then the general multiple worker is basically unrestricted. So that's so far what I've been using most. Um, it allows you to get a link and everyone can run the experiment with that link without any restrictions, right? So multiple people can use that link and one person can also use that link multiple times. And finally, there's, there's the mTurk worker that allows you to embed the experiment in mTurk, Mechanical Turk by Amazon. I haven't actually done that myself, but I don't think it's very complicated. That's my understanding. So, okay, I enable the general multiple worker, then I say get link, and then I simply, Yatos gives me this link, and this is the link that I then have to give to my participants, right? So I can send it to my participants by email or give them this link in some other way. Now, what happens then if my participants want to uh, go to, want to run this experiment, they simply go to this link, they visit this link, and it will launch the experiment in a browser. Right now, this looks very similar to what we did before with the test experiment in a browser, but right now we're actually doing it properly online, right? You're seeing that here there is a proper website and anyone can do this from any location. So we're really online now. Okay, click with the mouse to begin. Uh, so I will run the experiment. I will cut it out of the, the video because it takes a little while. Um, uh, and then you will see how you can collect the data. Okay, up, up. Okay, welcome back. Uh, so I finished the experiment, 16 trials, was not that long. And now I get some feedback, right? Average reaction time, accuracy, press any key to continue. The experiment is finished, press any key to continue. And now Yato says, okay, the study is finished. Okay, so now we've collected one participant uh, data file, you could say. So how do, we, how do we access this data in Yatos? Well, we simply click on results. Up. <clears throat> and there you will see the results. Here you see this is me, right? So if you collect more participants, you will have like more of these entries. Uh, you see the state is finished because I finished the entire experiment. What you will see quite often is that participants actually click on the link, they do a few trials, and then they don't completely finish the experiment and it will have some kind of different state. Now, what does the data look like? You can get a preview of the data if you simply expand it like this, but let's also just export the data. Export results, all results, YATOS results. Let's open it. Hup. Now, here you see um, what it looks like, the results. It looks maybe a little bit overwhelming because you might be used to a spreadsheet 
that has like columns and rows kind of organized. And this is a different format. We kind of have to use a different format um, for the purpose of running it online. And this is called JSON. It is a particular way in which data is organized, standard, but you do need to process it for a little bit. I'm not going into that uh, right now, but just to show you that actually all the important information is there. You see here, response write, right? Response time up. Uh, 847 milliseconds, right? So all the information is here and every sort of every entry in our, in this JSON, uh, JSON file is one, uh, is one trial of the experiment. So uh, here we have a data file. If you have more participants, this data file will simply be much, much, much bigger. And actually we've used uh, YATOS and Open Sesame in this way as part of a introduction to psychology course uh, earlier this, uh, this academic year to sort of a, uh, familiarize the students with, with what a psychology experiment is uh, and also test the software. And then we collected massive amounts of data. There were over 1,000 students. Um, and that worked really, really uh, well, actually. So um, I'm, I, it was quite smooth. Okay, so I think now we've seen all that we uh, need to know, more or less, in order to run experiments online. So what do we need? Well, we need a reasonably recent version of Open Sesame that has the OS Web extension installed. Uh, we need to have an experiment that is actually compatible with OS Web, so that doesn't contain Python inline code or other elements that are not supported by OS Web that you cannot run online. Then you need to export your experiment as a YATOS study. And then you need to have a YATOS installation that is running somewhere on a web server and that you have access to. And that needs to be provided. Either you need to install it yourself or your, your university, your institution needs to install it for you and give you access to it. Right now, I've, did it, I, I've, I've shown the demonstration on the Cortex test server, but you should not do that for any other purpose except testing and playing around with it. Okay, now with that, I hope that I've been able to give you some idea of how you can run psychology experiments online with Open Sesame. I hope that I've convinced you that it's actually quite easy and that you can uh, run pretty complicated experiments reliably online um, in this way. So with that, thank you very much for your attention.